Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with a little physique update, the posing video of Quinton area. Quinton is 4 weeks out of Tampa Pro and 5 weeks out of Texas Pro and at this point he looks phenomenal. He looks like he made some serious changes from his last competitive season and you know what, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Ronnie Coleman when he was younger. Like very dominant limbs, legs and arms, small waist, you know, kind of similar structure, similar silhouette. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? And no, I'm not saying that this is going to be the progression that Quinton is gonna make. I wish, I wish we had another Ronnie Coleman, but that's not likely to be the case. In this photo on the left, I think Ronnie was natural. Quinton is better now than Ronnie was here, of course, but the progress that Ronnie made after was just ridiculous. And I'm not saying that Quinton area has the potential to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, I'm just saying he has a similar structure like Ronnie. But is there potential? I mean, if you talk about the structure, the shape, uh, the years in bodybuilding, how old he is, and he is a younger guy, uh, everything, if you consider everything, the way he looks right now, there is a lot of potential. He can be great. And if he wins one of these two shows, and I think he will win one at least, I'm not sure who else is doing Tampa, but Steve Kukla is doing Texas. So it's gonna be hard for Quinton to beat Kukla and win Texas, maybe he will, maybe he won't, uh, last year he was close, he was second, I'm not sure which show it was, I think it was a Canadian show, Joel Thomas beat him, but I think this year Quinton is gonna earn his Mr. Olympia qualification. I think I praised him enough, now let's talk about his weaknesses and that is definitely going to be his back. It was a weakness before and I don't think he really changed much, I don't think his back improved that much. Maybe it's gonna be a little bit better on the stage, you know, back is the kind of a muscle group that you need to wait to be completely shredded before you see what kind of changes you actually made, unless the changes are tremendous, which is unlikely to be the case, because the guys who have problems with their backs, usually they don't really make crazy changes, unless you are Chris Bumstead, of course, but as far as Quinton right here, you can definitely say that his back is his weakness, it's still a little bit too shallow, it's still a little bit too narrow, so I would definitely like to see this back wider, I would love to see those lats pop a little bit more, and I would like to see more thickness, you know, to the mid lats, to the traps, to the rhomboids, but really I'm nitpicking here, I mean a couple of years ago he had the entire upper body weaker than his lower body, his legs were just much much bigger in comparison, but now he improved that imbalance for sure. His upper body came up a lot and he improved chest, he improved arms, delts and everything except for back. Maybe he improved back too, but not enough, I mean everything else probably grew more, and also he has really big arms, really massive arms, and also pretty big shoulders, so in comparison it makes his back look even smaller than it actually is. But I think it's gonna hurt him, you know, he's very much limp dominant, he has some seriously massive arms, big legs, look at those freaking quads, just really aesthetic and really big, really massive, and in combination with those, look at his arms, look at the lats as well from the front, look at the chest, the chest is not bad at all, and also very very small waist, great abs, look at the side tricep, it flows so well, what an aesthetic physique, really a beautiful physique, the only flaw that I can find is the back. Anyways, his conditioning is great for 4 weeks out, in 4 weeks we will see him on stage, I think he's going to be peeled and he's going to look the best that he ever looked, and I think he's going to win the Tampa and he will be at the Mr. Olympia, and with this genetics, with this shape, even though his back is a little bit weak, I think he has a chance to crack the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think about this guy? If you guys want to support my channel, you can try one of the old school lab supplements, for example Classic Creatine is a great creatine from the old school labs, you can't go wrong with creatine, it is one of those supplements that help a lot, whether you're natural or not, you still have to use it, everybody is using it, 5-10 to 10 grams a day, so guys definitely suggest getting this if you don't use it already, and if you want to try the old school labs classic creatine, just click in the link in the description of this video and use the code DEVON for a 12% discount. Alright, now let's mention another Canadian, it is Ian Valier, and as you guys know, if you follow this guy, he always posts these kind of photos uh, in the last week or so of his prep, so he says, I know you all missed the glutes, so here we are, 8 days out, uh, walnut mode engaged. And yeah, his glutes do look kind of like walnuts, they are really shredded, really hard, um, yeah, I know it's kind of gay watching this photo, but as Ian says, you're only gay if you're gay, so, I mean, he's bringing the condition, you know, he's really bringing it, and what I noticed here, really, is the kind, it's kind of like the similar thing that I noticed on Quinton area, uh, the back, 
right? I mean, look at the back. You sometimes won't even notice how, how poor his back is because of his great shoulders, his great arms, his great glutes and legs even. But back itself, it's pretty weak, right? It's pretty shallow. You know, it's kind of weird even that a guy <laughs> that massive, you know, he was 270, three weeks out, shredded basically. On stage this year, he's going to be, as he says, around 262. So for a guy that massive to have a back small like this, it's kind of weird. Now, guys, I don't know if you know, but I'm a huge fan of Ian, of his physique as well and his personality. So I really hope he won't watch this video. But I have to be honest here. This is what I'm seeing. And he will easily win Vancouver Pro. I know that. And as far as Mr. Olympia, he might even go up in places. I do love his physique, but everybody has flaws, and this is Ian's flaw, and I knew this. I knew his back and his chest were a little bit shallow, but I did not think it was this bad, because he knew how to hide his weaknesses well. And that is what a great bodybuilder does. It's really rare that somebody has no flaws. I mean, except for Phil Heath, if you, if you don't consider his uh, narrow clavicles a weakness, except for Phil Heath, everybody had flaws. <laughs> and Ian does as well. Like, it's his back and his chest. So I try to find some photos of his back to see, is it really that bad on stage? And it's really hard to find photos of his back. He's really trying to hide that. So here you can see his back, but all the way back in 2016. Here is another photo that I found on Google when I googled his back, but it's all the way back from 2018. You can find photos of his back, of course, on websites, but when I Google searched Ian Valier back, this is the only photo that I could find uh, from his recent shows. And here, does his back look that bad? Well, I gotta say, his back double bicep doesn't look that bad. But it's not because of the back, really. It's because of the crazy shredded and massive glutes, big legs, crazy delts and big arms, big forearms, and good crazy conditioning. But the back itself? He has pretty good traps, but lower back, I mean, the lats, very weak, very weak. And how can he change this? I mean, if he didn't change it by now, I don't think he ever will. I think this is going to be his downfall forever, unfortunately. But I mean, it's really weird that a guy this massive, this big, can have one body part that is so much underdeveloped. You know, it's kind of weird. But it is what it is. I mean, he looks great. He looks shredded at this point. Not that he really needs to be. Not that he actually has competition at Vancouver Pro. But sure, why not? Just in case. And also because of the fans and the haters. He doesn't want to show up looking horrible. So we're going to see a great edition of Fian Valier. I'm sure better than ever. He's gonna get his easy Mr. Olympia qualification and uh, we'll see how well will he do at the Mr. Olympia and if he's gonna do more shows this year. He said he might do Texas. We'll see. Alright, next, uh, Fuad Abiyad versus Bob Chicarillo drama. I gotta mention what is going on with this. We did not yet get uh, Fuad Abiyad's official response. I'm sure he will speak about it on his YouTube channel, on his podcast, as soon as the next episode gets out. I can't wait for it. Not just because of that, but because of the podcast. I love it so much. And I'm sure you guys follow it as well. But if you don't, I will post whatever he said about the situation on my channel. So guys, subscribe for the bodybuilding updates. Anyways, here is his sort of response to Bob Chicarillo. If you guys watched Bob's video, he said at one point, before he said... What did he do for the athletes? As an athlete rep, he said to Fuad, while you were in Canada making a snowman. Basically trying to say that while Bob was doing all these great things for the athletes as an athlete rep, Fuad was in Canada not doing anything. Which is of course not true. He was working really hard on building his own brand. Not to mention what he is doing now for bodybuilding. But that's basically what Bob said. And so <laughs> Fuad uh, took this opportunity to make this photo. And you know what? Maybe this is going to be all the response that we're going to get from Fuad. I hope not. I hope he's going to respond to Bob. But maybe he just won't. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is all the response that we're going to get. Anyways, this made me laugh. This definitely made me smile. I don't want to drag this topic too much, but I gotta say, after I heard everything from the other people, from Bob Chicarillo himself, I gotta say, I'm 100% on Fuad Abiyad's side. Alright, next story is Nick Walker basically confirming that he's gonna be doing the Arnold Classic 2023. 
As you can see, Arnold Classic already started with the promotions and Nick Walker commented in one of these posts and he said I'm back. So for this 35th, by the way, annual Arnold Classic, Nick Walker is gonna be coming back. He did not defend his title this year, Matt Jensen, his former coach, was very much against it, at least that's the word on the street, Nick Walker really wanted to defend his title, but Matt wanted Nick to take some rest, because he has been prepping since he turned pro, he didn't stop for like two years, so it was definitely a better decision to take some time off, and now he's gonna be coming at his absolute best for the Mr. Olympia, but it looks like we will see him back on the Arnold Classic stage next year in 2023. It's kind of been a while since we saw a physique update of Nick Walker, but as you can see he looks really big, probably at his biggest ever. He's doing lunges in a skirt for some reason, without any pants or whatever, uh, but uh, he does look really big. I mean, look at the size of those legs, look at the size of this freaking guy, he is massive. And those dumbbells or whatever you call them are really awesome, and especially for the lunges. Uh, and this is a really big gym, this is a really huge gym, uh, you can do lunges for days here. So he looks good, he looks really massive, he looks uh, also very lean, very conditioned, and he's gonna be showcasing something incredible for the Mr. Olympia. I think he's gonna be uh, jumping in places, I think he won't be fifth again, I think he's gonna be in top three this year. The last time he updated us, he said that he was taking some time off of gear, you know, refreshing his receptors, and then his uh, Mr. Olympia prep is gonna start. And at this point, there is 24 weeks until the Mr. Olympia, so he may have already started with his prep slowly, or he is about to start in the next couple of weeks. But right now, in these uh, photos and updates and everything that I saw so far, he looks really, really massive. I mean, last time, last year, he looked, you know, <laughs> maxed out, basically. His frame looked so ridiculously big, but it looks like he gained more muscle. And quads were definitely uh, a focus of his during the offseason. And as you can see, they grew. I mean, those, those quads are looking really massive. And here is how he trains. He trains like a freaking maniac. He really goes to failure. I'm going to fast forward this video for a little. And as you can see, he's failing in the end. Completely failing on a leg press. That's some scary stuff, man. Wow. Alright, next we have an update of Hari Chupan, uh, he's training and then he's doing a little posing and he looks absolutely massive, but after everything that happened these days between him and his managers, all the Sintel talk, I can't help but think that all this muscle is not real muscle, that it's all fake, that it's all Sintel. Of course, not all, but I, I don't know, how much is there? Is there only oil in delts? Is there oil in arms? I'm pretty sure about those two body parts, but what about the back? You're gonna see his back in a moment, it also looks massive. I know people are injecting Sintel in their upper chest and traps and everywhere, basically. So look at his physique right here when he does this. Wow. Looks really impressive, looks really big. But would he be here if there wasn't for Sintel? I mean, of course, I always knew about this and I used to notice it before, but now I'm kind of noticing it more. Are you guys the same as me? I mean, look at the forearms here, compare them to, to his arms, especially the biceps. I mean, do these biceps flow naturally? And look at the delts, how much they're popping. I mean, yeah, we all know, of course, we knew even before this. But, like, how much Sintel is he really using? How much of these gains are actually real? Would he be, I don't know, would his arms be like 5 inches smaller, 1 inch smaller, 2, 3 inches? I don't know. Would his shoulders be completely flat and small? You know, it's, it's really tough to answer this question, but looking at this photo right here in this pose, he looks like a freak, but, I mean, those biceps are just throwing me off, man, honestly. Also here, when he's moving away from the exercise before he hits the pose, look at the arms, look at those triceps and biceps. And look at the delts, I mean, it's all just so round and popping, it just looks so unnatural. And I look at the biceps here, look at the biceps between the forearms, the difference is insane. You know, he's starting to look kind of like those simple freaks a little bit. I look at it here, look at the biceps here, compared to forearms, right? I mean, it doesn't look normal, not at all, unfortunately. Now, whatever he did, he got away with it. So he's definitely the, the best bodybuilder in the world that got away with doing this kind of stuff because he's third at the Mr. Olympia, guys, for a few years now. 
Does he look amazing in poses for sure, but in transitions and in some poses also, he looks suspicious. <laughs> suspicious is a mild word. I just have to use the word weird. He looks weird in some poses. In this front double bicep here, he looks amazing. He looks phenomenal. But here, in the transition, yeah, I know it's just a transition. It's not the pose, but I don't want to see this kind of stuff ever, really. But whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Tell me what do you think is Sinto cheating? And are you like me? Do you notice it more now on Hadi after you heard all this? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support my channel, once again, check out the Old School Labs website. Also, please subscribe, guys. Thank you so much once again. All the best and bye-bye.